I wanted to ask you, I know you had like a pretty big accident and you got injured. So um, on your way to recovery, when you went back to training, like I guess there were some days that you expected to do more than your body would possibilitate you to do so. Like it started hurting and you didn't expect it. So oh. tip would you give um, someone who is in that process like to keep that right mentality to like I'm in the gym, I'm gonna keep going. Yep, totally. So when I um so um to put into context if some of as some of you guys didn't know, at the end of last year I fell off my mountain bike and I, I broke a couple of vertebrae um processes in my back. Um and then I also punched it along and broke some ribs. So that was a little bit and that was right during the open. So we were three weeks into the CrossFit Open. And yeah, and I basically couldn't compete anymore. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, so I, I try to look on the bright side as much as I possibly could. I kind of saw it as a bit of a challenge, like AMRAP healing as fast as I possibly could. Um, so I, I tried to, uh, I guess, call upon all the knowledge or all the things that I've done in the past to help speed recovery. And I tried to just turbocharge it as much as possible. So I saw it as a bit of a challenge to try and recover as much as I could. So making sure I was getting things like sunlight, making sure I was sleeping a lot, making sure I was fueling myself with the best quality foods I could. Um, and, you know, drinking lots of water, getting to the ocean, um, getting cold, um, doing contrast therapy, jumping in the sauna when I could, um, getting in the float tank. And even to the point, guys, even just visualizing the bones healing and visualizing the lungs repairing um, because I had an Ironman that I really wanted to do five weeks later after the crash. So that was something that I didn't want to miss out on. So all I did was I just spent my time basically doing what we just did then, that working in process or that finding the parasympathetic or finding the, uh, the yin stage where we do all of our recovery. We don't recover in the yang phase. We recover in the yin phase. So I was basically trying to put myself in the yin phase as much as possible. And then when I went to work out at the gym, um, I basically just chose movements that allowed me to improve my fitness that didn't cause too much pain. So I found that I could ride my bike without a lot of pain. So I rode my bike a lot. And then I also found that I could start swimming. So I got in the pool as much as I could. Um, and the thing that hurt the most, especially in my back was running. Um, so I had to take it easy with running So then I just increased the amount that I swum and the amount that I could do bike riding. So I think choose the things that allow you to express your fitness, allow you to get better at the things that you want to get better at. Um, and if you ever have any questions on that, feel free, shoot me a message. Um, I pretty much try and get back to absolutely everyone on Instagram. Um, I do my best. Uh, sometimes I struggle, but <laughs> um, I do my best to try and get back to everybody. So if you ever have any questions or issues with that and, you know, you might have an injury, you want to work around it, flick me a message and I'll try my best to get back to you. Okay. Thank you so much. You're so sweet and so inspiring. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Marina, for, for, the, for the question, James. We had Sophie as well raising the hand and then Jeremy as well wants to ask a question. So we'll go Sophie first and then Jeremy, you shoot. Yes. So my question is regarding nutrition. So, yeah. uh, if I'm correct, you well recently went from well to a vegan diet. Like, how has that changed? Yeah. And if we're doing sports at such a high level, like, what is it that you think about? And then the supplements, and how does your diet look like? Sure. So um, I'm almost coming up to what date are we today? It is the. The 13th of September, 13th of September. So I'll be a year, a year vegan in 17 days. Um, and you know, like I think, I th definitely think you can be healthy um, on either diet, whether you want to be eat omnivorous diet or if you want to eat plant-based diet, I think you can be healthy on either. But the biggest thing that I look at in my diet is variety. I try and eat everything from a whole food base or mostly like at least 80, 85% of my diet is whole food. Um, there are times when, you know, my partner and I will want to, you know, make something and, you know, it might be something that is potentially a little bit processed, but it's a treat for us. But basically the, the biggest bulk of my diet is 
whole food base and trying to get as much variety as possible. So as many different colors as I can. So blueberries, goji berries, um, sweet potato, um, lots of herbs, lots of, lots of plant food, like varieties of plant food and as many different colors as possible. Um, basically, if you could eat the rainbow in every meal, you're going to be doing a really good thing for your body. It's going to be antioxidant rich. It's going to be vitamin rich. It's going to give you all the necessary minerals you're going to need for your body to function optimally and create new cells and create better DNA. Um, and then, you know, you have to do your own research. At the end of the day, you also have to do what makes it feel good for you. You have to be mentally okay with it. You have to be physically okay with it. You have to um, find out what really suits your body and it's trial and error. Um, there's no one diet that I could say, you need to do this and it's gonna work for you because everyone is a complete individual. Um, but I think if you do your best and be in tune and be intuitive to what your body is wanting, you'll know. I know in myself when I get up in the morning my body will say, hey, I want you to have sourdough, sourdough toast with avocado on top. And that's what I'll give myself. And then other days will say, I want you to have oats with walnuts, pecans, blueberries and raspberries. So that's what I'll give it. And that's, you know, that's kind of what I'll go to. I'll do it by feel. And the more intuitive you get and do what your body feels. And if you can do it from a whole food, a whole food sector, um, you'll be very healthy for it for sure. It's basically just giving your body the nutrients it needs to thrive, com uh, combat disease, and help recover better. Thank you. Awesome. No Thank worries. you, Sophie, for the, for the question. Uh, Jeremy, I, I believe you were, you were the next. Yeah. Hi, uh, James. Thank you so much for the training and, uh, and Jordi for the great opportunity to, to train with such an amazing athlete. So thanks. And thanks, James. Uh, Thank you. Jordi, double unders. So, you know, when your legs are, are fresh, it's quite easy. But then in a workout like this one, you make lunges, you make squats, and it starts to becoming even more difficult. Uh, what will be your, your advice on that to, to improve, you know, after a few rounds like this one, when you're tired, what, what can uh, I do, you know, for the double unders? Yes, of course. And this happens to me all the time. I start a workout and I'm, you know, in a great place and then I get three rounds into a six round workout and my legs are already starting to give way. Um, the best thing that you can do is slow it down to a pace that you can control. No matter what you do, um, if you get to your lactic threshold where your legs start to burn and you try and sit on that for too long, um, you obviously will burn out and you'll be much slower. So what I tend to do is I'll slow it down to my breath rate. So if I'm doing a squat, I'll breathe on a, on a time. So I'll, I'll squat and I'll breathe once every time. And that'll keep me moving at a pace that can allow me to keep flowing. And this is what I did when I did the Ironman. Um, I basically, except for the swim, but during the bike ride, I only breathe through my nose. And for the run, I only breathe through my nose. So that slows me down to a point that I know that I could sustain for 10 hours. Um, if I was mouth breathing over and over and over again, it would probably put me at a pace that put me in a hole or against the wall too early. But if I was to nasal breathe, it would slow me down to a pace that I knew that I could sustain for a very, very long time to keep me aerobic. So if you're finding that your legs are burning out, you're definitely in that lactate threshold and you need to slow it down if you've got a long way to go. If you've only got one round to go and your legs are burning, who cares? Go for it. Like smash it out. And if you've got like a couple of minutes left in the workout, you just need to fight against that. I guess that beast of a workout in itself fight against the, uh, the, the, the mental, the mental fatigue or the mental want to slow down. If you've got like one minute to go, you just need to push through. If you've got 10 minutes to go, you just need to slow it down to something that's, um, you're able to, to deal with. And that's, you know, going back to breath and slowing it down via your breath and going back to being more aerobic rather than more lactic. And you exhale by the mouth, no? It's in by the yes, nose. Yes, all the nose. No, uh, for I go nose in and nose out. And then if, and then if I, um, my next stage would be go through the nose, out through the mouth. And then my next stage is when I'm in the hurt locker and I've got like 100 meters left to sprint, mouth only. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks.
Thank you, Jeremy, for, for the question. Um, we also have uh, Alejandro here um, in, in the chat. Alejandro, I'm, I'm reading the chat as well. If you guys, instead of you know, asking your questions, you wanna, you, you wanna write here on the chat, by all means do it. We have Alejandro here saying that his English is awful. I'm sure it's better than you think. But he's saying that he started, he started CrossFit a, just a year ago, and I think he's feeling it a bit impatient. I think growing, you know, getting better at CrossFit and faster is not going as fast as I, as I would like. I guess he's looking for some inputs on how does he stay patient and, you know, what does he, what should he expect in terms of, you know, increasing his performance. Yeah, totally. And I get this question all the time is, you know, if I train, if I train twice a day, five days a week, you know, will I make it to the CrossFit Games in two years time? That is a completely unknown thing. The best thing that you can do, and this is what my coach drilled into me back in 2011 when I first started CrossFit, was a slow progression or a slow and smooth progression will be a better progression for you and it'll end up being faster. If we miss out on the technique and we try and bump up the weights too quick or we try and get into butterfly pull-ups before we can do strict pull-ups and we try and do kipping ring dips before we can do strict ring dips and kipping muscle-ups before we can get our strict muscle-ups, this puts us in a position where we start to miss the basics which you will need in competition. Whenever I do a competition, I always rely on my base basics. Um, the, the flashy stuff at the end is all built on the foundation. And if our foundation isn't strong, um, then we start to break down a lot earlier, a, a lot later um, in our workout. So if you guys can focus on um, transitioning slow, don't be trying to you know, bump up your snatch every week with a new PR. You know, just build small little blocks every single time. And, you know, it's taken me, it's like 10 years to build a really good platform. So it, it takes time. You have to be patient. And if you have friends of yours that are making really good progress in a really short amount of time, um, have faith in the fact that you will catch up and then you'll probably <laughs> exceed um, where you get to just by taking a slower, smoother progression rather than spiking early and then coming down with injury and not being able to train. Keep it nice and steady on the way through and then you'll slowly pick it up towards the end. Um, it just takes time. You just have to be consistent. The biggest key thing that I give to everyone that asks for my help with training, the, the biggest thing is consistency. If you're consistent every day, just doing a little bit to improve every day, that will far outweigh training for 20 hours in one week and then training four hours next week because you're so tired or you're so burnt out. That, does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And I think it's just, just a great way of, of, of getting us to understand that the longevity of, of, of training and performance. And it's all about longevity. It's 100% all about longevity. And if you can turn it into a lifestyle thing that you do on a regular basis, you will be much fitter for it. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question. Guys, if, 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 if you want to have one last question, raise your hand. If not, I'm going to go here. Well, I think we have Xavier, Xavier Barnes. You're going to need to unmute. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't <laughs> find the, the click. <laughs> Hello, James. I'm Xavi. Uh, I'm sorry because I couldn't do the workout because I had some problems with my nage balls during the lockdown. So oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I have a question. It's like, uh, how do you keep your motivation up? Because you have been doing CrossFit for a long of years. I mean, I think that you said from 2011. And it's like, how the hell do you keep your motivation? Because it's too hard to do CrossFit. It's like... Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's a really good question. And sometimes I ask myself the same thing <laughs> over and over again. But probably the biggest thing that I do myself is I like to dabble in other areas outside of CrossFit all the time. So if I'm really, you know, getting to the point where I'm not enjoying um, what I'm doing at that particular time, I might go register for a triathlon. Or if I'm not enjoying CrossFit, um, I might go register for a, an Olympic lifting competition. Or if I'm not enjoying that, I might register for a road bike race. Or if I'm not enjoying that, I might go register for a, um, you know, like a, 
a touch football tournament or something like that. So I keep myself occupied outside of the sport of CrossFit with things that I learned during CrossFit to help me do better. I also love surfing. So I'll surf as much as possible. And the more I surf, the more I crave doing CrossFit and the more I do CrossFit, the more I crave going back and surfing. So then you can kind of, you just, you know, if I, all I was to do, like there was a time where I would do CrossFit day in, day out, every day. And I did that for years and years and years and years. And then I got to the point where I was really burnt out. I wasn't enjoying getting into the gym. And so all I did was I just found, um, I found passions outside of CrossFit that made me really enjoy going back. It's like when you go for a holiday and you don't train for two weeks and then you get to the last three days of your holiday and all you're thinking is, can't wait, get back to train. I can't wait to train. I can't wait to train. I'm going to get in a good, good routine when I get back from my holiday. It's the same type of thing, but do that a little bit more regularly. Take the weekend off CrossFit, go surfing or go bike riding or go hiking. And then you'll get back Monday and you'll be keen to get back into it again. Yeah. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chubby. I think we had Acer. Acer is that, um, I'm not sure if that is your name. I think it might be the name of your computer. Yes, you may <laughs> let, let, let us know what your name is and also your question. Hi, I'm Cinzia for Prescara, Italy. Hi, James. Thank you. Uh, I try to explain at my, at my best. Sorry for my not perfect English. Um, I'll get it. I want to ask you, um, a lot of coach uh, um, talks about uh, the importance of pace time during words, especially during the long ones. So I want to ask you, um, what do you think about you? And uh, if there is um, a method um, to um, find our personal pace time and uh, how we can do. So the best thing about pacing is it's so individual for everybody. Um, you have to be, like I did with nutrition, you have to be intuitive. For me, I know that if I'm doing a 20-minute workout, that that's roughly what I would do, say, a five-kilometer run. So I will go out with the effort that I'm doing the workout in the gym uh, with the effort that I would do for a 5K run. So I would try and keep myself moving at a decent pace, but nothing that nothing that is making me blow too hard too early. Um, I think you'll have to look at the time frame. Um, 10 minutes. I know in myself that I can start a workout and if it's 10 minutes, I can go pretty hard from the get go, but anything over that I have to keep to around about 70% or 60%, depending on how long the workout is. It's very individualized, but the best thing that you can do, is you have to take a mental note of every workout you do and know that, okay, that was a six minute workout. I know I can go flat chat for the whole thing. This was a 15 minute workout. I know I can go at around about 75 to 85% for that 15 minutes. Anything over 20 minutes, I'm going to have to go at a pace that still allows me to maintain a conversation. If I can't maintain a conversation and I've got a 40 minute workout in front of me, I'm going too fast. So things that you do, you're going to have to take your own, um, your own experience and then you're going to have to put your own experience into that workout and really think about it. And usually the best thing that you can do is start slower and build up speed towards the end, not start fast and then die at the end. Okay. Always start yeah. slow. Yeah, Always you. start slower. Thank no you. worries. Super interesting, super interesting input. And, and yeah, and coming from someone that has performed at your level, it, it's very, very relevant and proven sort of information. We have, I have two more questions here in the chat. The questions are pouring in. You wouldn't have all the time in the world, but again, if you have any more questions that you, that you have, maybe you remember after, Send, send them in. You can even also send them, send them to us, to Finish Free, because we can, we can also send, send an email to James and we'll, we'll post them and we'll publish every single question that you guys have. So by all means, send us an email or, or DM James, whatever you feel more comfortable, and we'll get those questions answered. We have uh, here um, Gerard first from, from Girona asking, how, you, how do you work on your strength? So what is it that, you, do you, that works best on, 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 on working on your strength, whether it's just weightlifting and what is it, what is it, how, how often do you work on your, on your strength? 
So the, the strength element for me um, is something that, you know, the raw strength stuff has always been pretty good for me because I've done it since such a young age. But then focusing on the Olympic lifting, like the snatch and the cleaning jerk has taken longer. Um, but this is something that I would work on uh, typically five to six days per week, um, normally five. Um, and whether it's, you know, Olympic lifting strength, but also including in that is like gymnastic strength. So working on strict pull-ups, working on weighted pull-ups, working on weighted dips. Um, I'm doing some type of strength exercise five to six days per week. Um, and sometimes it's twice a day. Some, some, sometimes it'll be, you know, more times than not. Leading into a competition, it'll be some strength in the morning and then some strength in the evening as well. But that's only because I've laid a foundation um, of training for a really long time. I would never recommend someone to jump in from doing zero to two days, at two, uh, two sessions in a day straight away. You need to build that foundation. If you don't build the foundation and take the time to do it, you'll get hurt, you'll get injured, and then you won't be able to train at all. So I highly recommend you build the foundation. You just do you know, an hour or so, 45 minutes to an hour, build it up. When you start to feel strong and good, maybe do that 45 minutes, an hour, and then maybe add in a run at the end of the day and see how you feel. And if your body responds really well, you can keep doing it. If your body is like, oh no, this is not good and you don't sleep well and you're getting irritated and you're getting frustrated really easily, this is a good sign to show you that you may be overtraining. So always go back to the, the one of the key things alongside breath is um, making sure our sleep is on point. So if your sleep is not on point, you're waking up through the night, you're not falling asleep very well, that is something that you need to think about um, before you start upping the training. Your sleep has to be really good. Brilliant, and then so we have, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up, we're gonna finish with one last, one last question I have here, and then we're gonna close the session, but by all means, as we mentioned, just send in your questions and we'll, we'll answer them. We have Jorge here saying that he had some difficulties with the microphone, and his, his question was, you know, how, in terms of supplements and, you know, what is it that you consider essential? What's helping you uh, supplement your nutrition daily? Yeah. So um, some things that I would really recommend, um, especially if you're training every day for me, um, I absolutely love smoothies. Like I'll make like three or four smoothies a day. Um, so I always make sure I've got a really good quality sprouted uh, vegan protein powder. Um, that really helps me um, to bump up my protein for the day. Um, another thing that I really, really like is making sure I have a really good quality uh, multivitamin. Um, I try and get all my nutrients or as many as my nutrients through my food as possible. So looking at lots of different types of berries, looking at lots of different types of uh, fruits, lots of different types of um, uh, vegetables um, and looking for as much color as possible, much, uh, as much pigmentation, um, lots of different various colors and that really helps. Um, but in terms of supplements, um, a really good multivitamin, a really good um, oil, um, something like um, you can do like a vegan, um, uh, like a, a grape, uh, grapefruit oil um, with a, maybe a little bit of um, CBD oil. Um, I really like that. It helps to calm me down a lot. Um, helps to put me to sleep too. Um, and then, you know, if you look at those two factors, looking at your oils, making sure you're getting in your essential oils, making sure you're getting in all your essential um, micronutrients through your multivitamin um, on top of a really good diet, um, those would be my probably my biggest crucial things and maybe a really good protein powder if you're lacking in variety of uh, different protein sources. So that would probably be my top three picks. Um, and then if you were looking at, you know, um, if you're looking for some extra strength gains and you wanted to add something in, maybe like a creatine monohydrate might be really good. Awesome. I mean, so, so much valuable information, especially coming from you. And I think we've touched pretty much everything. This has been such a, such an incredible session.